Hi, I'm Steve from the Oasis site and we're in Romans 5 where there's so much that helps us to understand how God saw us before we knew Jesus and how God saves us through Jesus. We may find the language a tad confusing, but it's worth digging into the content as it's intended to produce sheer joy in our hearts as Jesus follows. Let's look at two massive sources of this joy. Firstly, we see in these verses that we will be saved. That's future tense. We will be saved because of what Jesus has done in the past. Now, primarily, we tend to think of our salvation in the past tense. I got saved, and that's wonderfully true, but the Bible makes clear that we are also being saved, present tense, and, and on the day of Jesus' return, we will be saved, future tense. That's going to be an awesome day when Jesus will judge both the living and the dead. Now, most of us understand that as Christians, because we are trusting in Jesus and the sufficiency of his death, judgment has already passed over us. But these verses help assure us of this fact. And Paul does that by helping us to see that if God has done something, he's already done the biggest and hardest thing, then something smaller is no problem. Uh, for instance, we've been, many of us have been watching the Euros lately and France came into that as the World Cup winners. That's the hardest thing. So they would have been expected to win the Euros, which is the smaller thing. That smaller still was beating Switzerland, but they weren't able to do that. So we know, humanly speaking, this working from the hardest thing to the simpler thing doesn't always work. But with God, it's different. And these verses um, give us a, a, a very unflattering picture of what we were like before we knew Jesus. We were weak. We had no moral strength. We were sinful. That is, we were willfully rebellious. We were sinners, constantly falling short of God's standard of holiness. And we were enemies. We were hostile to God. Yet while in this most terrible of conditions, out, at our worst, out of lavish mercy, grace and kindness, Jesus Christ gave himself up to death for us so that we can be justified. That is, we can be declared to be in right standing with God and also so that we can be reconciled to God. We become friends with him rather than enemies. Now, if God has done all that, that is the most difficult thing in rescuing us. And he did that when we were so objectionable. Can we not trust him? Now we are his friends to do the easier thing and to finish the job of saving us from every last trace of sin in our lives when Jesus comes again. This should flood us with assurance, peace, comfort, and joy. A second massive source of joy comes from getting our heads round the fact that as Christians, we are now in Christ instead of in Adam. And these verses in Romans 5 compare and contrast Jesus Christ and Adam. The reason being, that God has chosen to always deal with mankind through a head or representative. And as the first man, Adam, became the head of the human race, so we are all born in Adam. Now, sadly, because Adam sinned, it had catastrophic implications for every human being, including you and me. Sin and death came in, that's physical and spiritual death, came to all of us. We are all born sinners. Sinning is natural to us. And therefore we live under the rule and reign of sin and death and the condemnation and judgment that it incurs. Now this seems grossly unfair to our Western individualistic minds. 
Other cultures with stronger collective identities don't struggle with this as much, but we tend to feel, why should I be declared a sinner before I have done anything wrong? Where's the joy in that? Well, here's the flip side. Adam is a pattern or a type or a model as our head and representative. And Jesus has come as the second Adam, a new and better head or representative. He is the countermeasure that God has taken on our behalf because of Adam's dreadful mistake. And Jesus, as fully man and fully God, reverses all the terrible consequences of Adam's sin. Because of this one man's perfect life, that's Jesus, and his death and resurrection, we can now be born again and thereby freed from the realm of sin and death. That is good news. Instead now, we come under the rule and reign of grace. And through faith, we are no longer found in Adam, but are placed by God fully and permanently in Christ. As a free gift, we now receive justification, righteousness, forgiveness, and so much more. Now that the pure, spotless Lamb of God should suffer and die for my sin, both inherited from Adam and my own willful sin, that is absolutely out. Outrageous. That is so unfair. But who is complaining? Instead, we rejoice with a joy inexpressible. So enjoy being in Christ today and knowing that you will be saved when Jesus comes again. God bless you.